Hello, I am Test Driver, welcome to episode 54, I think, of Forza Motorsport. We're in this episode, we're going to be using the Sparco Edition Lancer Evolution I won a few episodes ago. And we're going to be upgrading it to the top of A-Class because I'm going to be doing an A-Class specific race series with it. And it's not weigh very much from the start. What tires? What do tires do? They make them wider and lower profile. Okay. Um, I'll do these. There's anything with that. And I'll add a little bit more horsepower just because. Ooh, we can add quite a bit more horsepower. Almost 500. Alright, that's fine. Let's go ahead. Go back over to the championship mode. And we will be doing the A-Class Championship. Open the cars in Class A cars. Wait. Open the cars in Class A cars only. What? Did they try it? Wait, what? I Open the cars. I don't feel like the second cars is needed. What? I can't, my brain, it doesn't understand that. I don't I don't think that was supposed to be like that. I think that's a bad translation or something. Uh, but anyways, uh, open the Class A cars, cars, Class A cars, cars only, apparently. But we have Silverstone Short, yep. Tokyo Circuit, Mazda Raceway, Laguna Seca, Blue Mountains Raceway, Road Atlanta Long, Rio de Janeiro, and the infield of the test track. Oh boy. So, let's get started on Silverstone 2. Alright, second attempt at our first race because I wasn't paying attention and may have ramped the track just a little bit, so don't mind that, but let's get going. Hopefully I don't miss turn three this time. I guess that would be turn three because it kind of does a back and forth. It does a left and a right up here. Something like that. But, so, um, I don't know if I should be using this video to do an update or not, but I'm going to anyways. So basically, I, um, as I mentioned in the last episode, my computer is kind of ripperonies, my gaming computer, which has created another problem. So, you know I was playing through Burnout Paradise on that PC, and I'm 90% sure that the SSD I was using for Windows um, just committed Sudoku and will no longer work at all. Like, even in our computer, it doesn't do anything. It makes the computer freak out, and it's like, there's not an operating system found, but there really is one, even though I've set, you know, boot devices and all that, so. Yeah, and uh, the problem that I'm facing, of course, is that the save for that Burnout Paradise Let's Play is on that SSD, or was. I don't even know if there's anything on it anymore, really, because it seems to be dead. And I can't get to it. So either A, I have to go back on my other PC, which I've actually been using for gaming stuff recently, like some gaming stuff. Like emulators work surprisingly well on it. I'm uh, generally surprised, which may be foreshadowing something, some things coming in the future. But um, I'm using for just whatever I've been trying to do because I haven't been dicking around with the old gaming computer. And basically, it's just kind of broken. So, I'm not sure if... I really don't want to play through what I've played through in the game again quite yet. I mean, I would do it in the future. But for right now, I'm not really looking forward to trying to get back to where I was in the game. And I don't know what else to do. So, I'm thinking I may put that on hold for now until I feel like going back through maybe on the Xbox One or something. Because, I don't know, I don't even know if I care about, you know, using the PC version at this point. Plus, the fact that I can actually do Storm Island on the Xbox uh, is a pretty big reason to do it on Xbox. But, yeah, I'm not sure quite yet. So... I'll probably be deciding sometime soon. I'm going to just try and play through this game a little bit more, try and get through more of this game in the meantime, and we'll see kind of where 
I end up, I guess. Uh, it's never, uh, never easy doing thing for you, doing things for YouTube, and that's reality of it. I've had technical difficulties with almost every single Let's Play I've ever done. I've had technical difficulties with of some sort. I don't know why. It's it's random too. Um, some some of them are reoccurring, like you know, corrupted footage is a common one, and uh, delete uh, having stuff accidentally deleted is another one that happens fairly often. Um, so I've been trying to prevent it as best as I can. At least with this game, it's been the worst problem I've had was out of sync audio, which I still don't know what's causing that at all. But other than that, really, there's not been too much with this Let's Play, which cross my fingers and knock on wood, which there we go. My desk is made out of wood. That nothing serious happens, especially in these later parts when they're being an hour long. Except for the fact that, you know, the uh, audio desync only comes with long videos, of course. And then with Paradise, I was having issues with uh, getting out of sync really bad as well. Which is why I ended up using the Elgato to record it instead of fucking dealing with shadow play, which apparently does variable frame rate, and Adobe Premiere does not like it over bleh. Adobe Premiere does not like variable frame rate, which may also be the issue with the Elgato. I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't perfect, uh, for sure, especially the first episode of Paradise. I think it was the first episode, I can't remember. But yeah. So that's the kind of predicament I'm in at the moment with that. I'm thinking, um, like I said, I'm going to focus on doing a lot of this game or trying to get a lot done on this game. And I may or may not decide to start recording another Let's Play in between just because I know you guys are kind of bored with this game. And honestly, I kind of am too at this point, uh, which is understandable with the, the uh, decli declining amount of views on new videos of this game. Which, I don't blame you guys, honestly. So, that's why Paradise came in, and I was like, oh, this is great, because people are actually, you know, wanting to watch it, because it's something different, and something exciting. And now it's broken. So, I may start up new things, may not. I have no clue yet. I'll probably release an update video whenever I do decide. And we'll go from there. See, you know, see what happens, pretty much. Because I want to do more stuff. I always, like, oh, this game sounds like a great idea, but then it ends up being fucking 40 hours or whatever this game's going to be. And it's like, this wasn't a great idea. I mean, I'm all for long games, but for YouTube's sake, um, at least for Let's Plays, like, unless the game is, like, a really interesting game somehow, like, maybe if I did, like, Gran Turismo 4 or something, people would be more uh, attentive. I guess the word would be, I don't know, um, more likely to watch all the way through rather than a game like this where it's like, I don't know what the difference would be either, but I I know that a game like Gran Turismo 4 would get more views overall. I don't know how or why, but it does. And uh, trust me, I don't worry, I'm not worrying about going down that rabbit hole quite yet because I'm not going to spend 160 hours on playing through a Gran Turismo game yet. I do plan to sometime in the future. Not yet, though. Don't don't expect any kind of Gran Turismo shenanigans anytime soon. Unless I do, like, Gran Turismo 5 Prologue or one of the fucking concept games or whatever. One of those shorter ones. Or Gran Turismo PSP and just do, like, all of the fucking uh, license tests and then call that a Let's Play. Because that's really all you can do in GT PSP. But, yeah, uh, here's another tip if you're doing a Let's Play series. Find exciting games to play. Like... At least with, like, a lot of RPGs and stuff, it's pretty easy to find, you know, a pretty interesting game, like, or a game that's interesting all the way through, because you're doing different stuff and going to different places, whatever. But racing games, just, you know, that's why people like, you know, Need for Speed and fucking uh, Midnight Club and all that stuff so much, because it's like, every episode is pretty much an adventure, unlike a game like this, where it's like, oh boy, I'm going to race around Silverstone for nine laps again. Or test track for three laps again. It tends to uh, lose its charm after the first 20-something hours. Also, speaking of hours, I think 
after this episode, I'll have played this game for a whole 24 hours, or raced in this game for a whole 24 hours, which is pretty crazy, um, considering I never even got close to that beforehand. I was always like, you know, like five or six hours probably spent racing in this game. And then with this Let's Play, congrats, you fucking got more through the game. Ugh. There's my little rant on that, I guess. That's also why I run out of shit to say in games like this. Like, I could play Midnight Club for three hours straight and always have something to talk about. This game, it's like, I get half an hour in and I'm like, what do I say now? Because there's just nothing. So that's probably when I'll end up streaming this game some more, although I have had problems with... I tried to stream recently on Rock Band 2. I streamed the uh, entire fucking... Uh, Endless Setlist 2, which was six six hours long, and then I already played for an hour before that, so it was a seven hour long stream. And my Elgato kept getting a sync. So, I want to try to avoid that, but I don't know how, really. Um, because that's like the most annoying thing is getting out of fucking context. So, I don't know. Anyways, uh, this is the end of this race, so let's go ahead and, go ahead and continue on the next race. All right, we are on our second race at Tokyo, which is a track I haven't been on for a while. And I got a really bad launch because I wasn't paying attention, didn't hit the throttle quick enough. Thankfully, this car has all-wheel drive, so turn one isn't a problem on this track with this car, like it usually is, where everybody's like, hey, I'm just going to take the really slow and stupid route through turn one and fucking fuck up everything. It's usually what happens, but luckily not so much in this one. It's always kind of a breath of fresh air. Also, race one was pretty easy, which I'm not going to complain about. Like I said, it gets me done with this game quicker, so... That's all I'm really worried about at this point. That was a really bad turn, because I wasn't paying attention to my screen. I really need to close Facebook, because I have a thing on Facebook open, and... There's people commenting on it right now, and I keep getting distracted by it. Oh god, okay. That was actually a lot better than I expected. I thought I was gonna fly into the, like, that part of the turn. Luckily I did not. This car's got a badass spoiler too, ow. I, uh, I approve of the spoiler size of this car. Spoiler alert? Haha, <laughs> maybe I'll name the episode that. Maybe I will, even though that would work a lot better with other cars and other times, but it's still a big-ass spoiler, so it works. I don't care what anybody else thinks. Oh, God. We got sneeze, too. <coughs> Holy shit, that was a sneeze. Oh, God, I almost hit that. Man, that was a uh, that was a very violent sneeze. Gladly I don't have a face cam, so you couldn't see my fucking facial expression. I'm sure it was great during that, though. And speaking of face cams, something I should do in the future, but I don't know when. I mean, during like a you know a Need for Speed, like fucking Underground 2 esque Let's Play or something, it would work, or like Midnight Club, whatever. But uh. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Um, especially with the games like these. Like, how the fuck... Like, what would a face cam on a game like this add to the video at all? Like, if you have an opinion on that, let me know in the comment section below. Like, I'd like to hear it because I really have nothing that makes a game like this more interesting by adding a face cam. My brain can think of nothing that would do that. I was saying maybe like when I had a certain amount of subscribers or something like 500 subscribers or 1,000 or whatever, I would start doing face cams because, yeah, why not? But I don't know. What was I talking about in the last race? I completely lost my train of thought from that. Uh. Oh yeah, games and what's let's plays and stuff are going on. 
I don't know if I have anything more to add to that. Okay, thankfully I didn't have a sneezer there again. Oh, I guess I could say, um, I'm thinking about starting up to have another series of Let's Plays go on whenever, while I'm doing, you know, two other ones. So I'd have three different Let's Plays going on, but hear me out. The thing is, is that I did a lot of Let's Plays on my old channel. If you don't know, if you never saw my old channel, you can check it out at youtube.com slash testrive 426 um, I had a lot of Let's Plays on there, even including ones that I never finished because I was like, Bleh, basically. And uh, I hit that fucking wall twice now. And uh, basically, back then, I wasn't so anal about trying to make everything consistent with a Let's Play. So, like, quality-wise mostly, like, you know, one episode would be fucking 720p, 30 frames per second, the next episode would be 1080p, 60, or whatever kind of silly shit that was. So, that plus, like, the, uh, the sectioning, I guess you could call it, of my Let's Plays now is a lot better. Like, this game has been one episode per fucking event, and Midnight Club 2 was one episode per person, and PGR 3, or PGR 4 was one episode per event. You know, my old PGR 3 Let's Play was like that. But, I'd like to start redoing them for this channel and making them, you know, better, playing them on, like, you know, PC instead of PS2 or... Uh, I actually never did a PS2 Let's Play until I did Midnight Club 1. That was my first ever PS2 Let's Play. Um, but, I'm thinking about redoing them. I know it will fuck up a lot of... Uh, Consist not really consistency, but like it would be like random games out of a series instead of a certain order of the games, like how or like when they came out. Basically, like I wouldn't end up doing Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, Su Hot Pursuit Two first. You know, I'd go from fucking Underground to Underground Two to Hot Pursuit Two to whatever, and I don't know if I really care too much about that. All this channel has been a lot of actual uh, stuff like that except for Burnout Paradise was one that wasn't really um, coming after anything because Burnout Dominator came out between Revenge and uh, Paradise came out in 2007 but like you know I've done Forza 1 I've done Midnight Club 1 and 2 in order and I did uh, PGR 4 which was a continuation from my P series of other fucking PGR games the right side of this car is just sad now. It is the ultimate sad. But... <clears throat> basically... I want to redo them. Because why not? And plus I feel like you guys would enjoy watching those games too. Because those are a lot of games I actually enjoy a lot. Like... And I could actually finish some of them too, like Need for Speed High Stakes or Rally Sport Challenge 2. Maybe finish them. Speaking of long games, holy shit, Rally Sport Challenge 2. Like, it's not really long, it's in like hours long. It is pretty long though, it's like 30 something hours, I think. But, it's more of like each part is like 10 minutes long, because each event is about 10 minutes long or less, depending on the event. Like, some of the Rally Cross events are like fucking 2 minutes long. So you have an episode that's like two and a half minutes long, and then it goes back to ten minutes or whatever. And uh, that was, yeah, that's, that the game's an interesting one to go through. If you know what I mean, like you can either check out my old let's play of it or uh, Runner GT4 because he did an entire let's play of the entire game. Unlike me, he was actually smart enough to stick around and finish it. Unlike me, and uh, yeah, it's a very interesting one. And that's another problem is like games don't actually have to be like super long, but if they have a lot of parts. Kind of like PGR 4 was, because PGR 4 wasn't really a long game, uh, necessarily. Like, a lot of, some of the parts were even under 10 minutes long. But it was fucking, what, 55 parts total? I think? Well, I don't know. This game might actually be able to be about to pass that up, because I knew it was going to anyways, because I'd already figured out that this game was 75 parts from when I started the Let's Play, but... Huh. Yeah, it's about to pass it up. It's already been passed in hours for a long time. PGR4 was like, 
I think, 12 or 13 hours long, if I remember right. And this game is already, like I said, I've had 24 hours driven in this game. So I'm sure I'm up to, like, 26 or 7 hours, including all of the menus and everything. Everything in the videos makes it long. So I'm going to try and sh stay shy, stay shy, stay away from games like that for a while at least, hopefully. Like, I know Burnout Paradise wasn't going to be very long. Um, I'll show you, it's going to be probably like 20-something episodes and fucking eight or nine hours long at most, I think. I can't remember how much, how long, like, Burnout Revenge and stuff were. I don't know. I do have charts for that, though. Although they're not really linked anywhere right now, and... I kind of need to fix some things on them before I uh, make them available to the public again. Because I used to, like, track all my Let's Plays and track how many episodes they were and track how long they were and so on and so forth. But I kind of got lazy with it and stopped putting in my descriptions of my videos. And I've been kind of slightly keeping it updated. Like, I think the last time I updated it was when I was on, like, episode 20 or something of this game. Um, so maybe that'll make a comeback in the future. Because my problem was is that I'd make a lot of episodes and then they'd be going out one per day or whatever. And I want to update my chart and I wouldn't want wouldn't know if I was, should include all the parts that aren't uh, public yet or include all the ones that are. Just, I don't know. I don't know at this point. But, I don't know. It was, <laughs> I mean, I don't really see the, uh, the point to it anyways besides to keep track of the shit I've done for me. But if you guys want to see, like, all of that info, like, you know, all the games I've Let's Played and all the hours it took to complete them and so on and so forth. Um, you can let me know in the comment section below, I guess. And there we go, finished with our second race. Just over 10 minutes long. I lost 5,000 credits from smashing into the wall about four or five times. Ooh, I'm about to get a cool car, actually. I mean, I'm probably going to get this episode, but... There we go, we have 20 points. 20, 16, 12, 9, 7, 6, 5, 3. So, let's go ahead and continue on to the next race. Alright, on our third race at this track. Laguna Seca Desert fucking California track. Desert California track, that one. Don't remember the name. Doesn't matter. Okay, Mr. 911 GT2. Do you think you can just fucking do that and get away with it? No. Fuck you. I was just punting him off the track, but he deserved it. Fuck him. I'm kind of curious if this car has backup lights or not. And they're red. But fun fact, speaking of red backup lights, um, I recently drove a car that has red backup lights. So I drove a 2001 BMW Z8 recently. And it's weird because, like I said, the backup lights are like tinted red. But somehow, they show up as white. Or one of them does. I, I think the other one's a uh, actually a rear fog light because it makes sense. You know, the Europeans like to fucking do that shit. Um, but they're actually tinted red. But well, at least one of them is a backup light that shines white. I don't understand it at all. <laughs> My brain hurts whenever I look at that. That car just has all kinds of weird shit with it, though. Oh, oh he almost ran off the track. He almost went too fast. What a dingus. Like, you know, the whole gauge is in the center of the dash, and... The LED brake lights and turn signals I thought was cool because you didn't really see that in cars until like 2010, if not later. It's just become like a big thing recently with like manufacturers being like, oh, for the upgraded model, you can get LED backup or brake lights and fucking turn signals and nah. And it's like, whatever, really. Although I'm, I, I like LED turn signals and stuff. I actually have LED uh, lights in my brake lights on my truck right now. They're not, like, anything special. You just literally put in a LED light bulb where the old not-LED light bulb was. And apparently it doesn't work in every car, but it sure as hell has worked in my truck for the past year and a half or so. And they've never went out, and they're bright, and they come on instantly, and they're nice. But I, and I did my backup lights, too, but... I haven't gotten around to doing the turn signals yet because I can't stand a fast turn signal. And whenever you do the LED swap... It thinks like, oh, there's not a light bulb here, or oh, your light bulb's burned out, so it flashes fast, and I can't stand that. And there's way you can do, ways you can get around that, like the uh, the resistors or whatever they are, but again, I just really haven't gotten around to it. So, oh, what the hell, fucking 
rev limiter bullshit. I mean, I can kind of understand where this game comes from with its rev limiter shenanigans. But, like, I don't think you're going to damage your engine that bad just by hitting the rev limiter a few times. That's why it's there, is to not damage your engine. You don't damage your engine by hitting it. I mean, maybe you do if your engine's not, like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, not quite as stout as it was back when it was new or whatever. Like, my 193,000 mile 2.5 liter four cylinder in my truck. I really... I've taken off the rev limiter twice, as far as I know. Both by accident. I've never, like, even let it sit. Like, I hit the rev limiter once each time, and then I let off. So, I don't know. But, like, for a brand new car, and especially something like this that's obviously got, like, really good engine parts in it, I don't think hitting the rev limiter even, like, a hundred times is going to hurt the engine of this car. Like, look at Hondas. Look how long it takes them to fucking break whenever you hit the rev limiter. Like I said, if they have a lot of miles, they do, but, like, this car, this game is, like, basically everything is brand new condition. Even the muscle cars and everything, because they have as much horsepower as they did back in, you know, 1969 or whatever. And they seem to be, like, factory new. That's a weird thing I never really thought about with the games, is that the fact that every car, usually in games, unless you're, like, coming from the used car dealership in Gran Turismo or something, every car is in basically brand new condition. And even with the, or the used car dealership in Gran Turismo, you still have, like, perfect bodies and perfect, like, everything else. There are a few games that have implemented stuff like wear and tear that you get in your car or whatever. But for the most part, like, you know, obviously all the Forza games, it's like, every car is fucking factory fresh. As it was even, you know, a hundred years ago or yeah, hundred years ago or whatever. I wonder when games are going to start, like, implementing stuff like, more games are going to start implementing stuff such as, you know, degradation of the body panels or whatever. Because, like, you have Car Mechanic Simulator, but that's a Car Mechanic Simulator. That's not, like, a race car game or an open world game or anything. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about. I always thought the used car dealership in Gran Turismo was cool. I always thought that it would, like, or it should have, you know, the cars looking like they have 300,000 miles or whatever. Actually, I don't think... I think it's 300,000 kilometers. The random, like, 60s and prior cars that you can find in Gran Turismo 5 and use car dealership to have, like, a shitload of miles on them. I always thought those were interesting. Like, you know, the Citroen Dochevos and fucking uh, first-gen Corvettes and whatnot. The ground just disappeared in front of my car for a second there. What just happened? Uh, this fucking GT2 has been keeping up really well with me in this race. I'm not sure why. I mean, I can assume that I'm garbage at this track, because I am. And I keep hitting the goddamn rev limiter. I'm going to have to pay like 50 million credits just to have my engine fixed. Because of smacking the rev limiter every fucking turn. Dear game developers, add more degra like degradation. I don't think that's the right word. I feel like I don't even know where I got that word from, but fucking cars get shitty as they get driven more, basically. It happens in real life. It can't happen in video games. Like just let us have it, fucking Come on, Kaz or whatever the hell. Forza. Isn't that Ryan Cooper? Isn't he the big guy at uh, Forza? You know, Ryan Cooper. No, no. Alan Hartman, I think. Ryan Cooper's just sad he isn't in Need for Speed Pro Street anymore. <laughs> but yeah, there's actually a guy, that, like a high-level Forza employee, or like, you know, somebody who works on Forza and high-leveled. His name is Ryan Cooper, and it's fantastic. I used to follow him on Twitter, but I don't think I do anymore. I kind of stopped following all the turn 10 people because I stopped caring. 
And it's not like they're sending me any free games or anything, so I have no obligation to follow them at the moment. Especially because I barely play new Forza games anymore at all. Which includes Forza 7. Especially now because my computer is broken and I don't have a graphics card that can probably even run Forza 7 now. Because Forza Horizon 3 and Forza 6 Apex got really unhappy with the graphics card I have in my computer now. That This GTX 770. They would like... It was a constant little message that always said low warning, low video memory. And it said it 100% of the time when playing Horizon 3 and Forza 6 Apex. And it, was, it wasn't the greatest running games either. So... Ooh, excuse me. God damn. So, uh... Yeah, I'm not even going to try to play those games on PC anymore. If I want to play them, I'm going to play them on Xbox. Which means I have to download Forza 7, but whatever, I guess. That's why I wasn't worried about selling my graphics card, because I was like, all of the games that like I can't run on my computers at the moment that I have on PC are games I can also play on Xbox One or whatever. So it's not like it's that big of a deal at all. Slow down! Use the handbrake, yeah, actually kind of worked out for me. Doing almost a second worse than my best. Almost. Let's see. Yeah, how come we couldn't get... This is like the exact same color and everything as the fucking NSX on the cover of this game. AKA the NSX I used last episode, pretty much. Why couldn't they have the NSX in the game as well? Like, have a Forza Motorsport Edition NSX. And why has it only been in one game? Why has it only been in Forza 3 past this game? Like, what's up with that? Anyways, I got 53,000 credits. That's a decent amount. We're almost level 46. I will, unless I fuck up and get a lot of credits taken off, I should. Or no, I, I'm going to have it anyways, because, yeah, it's 100,000 credits I need, and I have three races left, so let's get you on to the next race. All right, on to our fourth race at Blue Mountain Raceway. Oh, boy, this track. I almost hit the red limiter. That was a pretty good uh, timed stab of the throttle, I guess. Also, this is a reverse version of this track, which is eh. I, I, I mean, they're both as eh equally, honestly. I would much rather race on actual Bathurst, but you can't do that on this game because it wasn't licensed in this game. It wasn't licensed in a lot of games, actually. It was only licensed in, like, the Toka race driver games. From this era, at least. You know, Forza... What was it? Forza 6 introduced it, and Gran Turismo 6. I don't know. Uh. Oh god, all-wheel drive makes the walls a lot closer. So we got five laps in here. I think I should be able to finish the laps in less than two minutes, I think. I don't know. I don't remember how long the lap times are on this track for a car like this. Also, 911 GT2, man, please just don't be close. I'm hitting a wall. I'm dead. Rip. Hey, thank you for slowing down and not ramming into me like you, you normally would. And it's time to pull away, maybe. Hopefully. And not hit more walls. Hopefully. Walls are dangerous. Did you know? car doesn't really like this track. The all-wheel drive system is not helping out at all around these fairly sharp turns. Speaking of sharp turns, I don't like it. I guess... No, we have... What do we have left? Oh, yeah, Rio de Janeiro and, uh... Fucking test track. Not looking forward to test track. Never have looked forward to test track, honestly. But Rio de Janeiro doesn't seem too bad with this car, because, like, there's a lot of high-speed turns. And there's a lot of walls to run into as well. Uh huh. 
Also, yeah, lap time was way over two minutes. So, it's gonna be a fairly long race. Now well, it's gonna be like fucking 11 minutes and like 30 seconds, maybe. Still, it's too damn long. Over 10 minutes is too damn long. Hey, it didn't smack that all this time, at least. Didn't spin out on that turn. It's always the worst feeling when you spin out. Especially when you spin out, and you end up, like, with your front of your car up against the wall, so you can't just go forward to get out of the spot that you're in. Please, car. Steering is a thing. I know dirt doesn't equal steer, but please, just, just do it anyways. I don't know what I was saying anymore. Something about all-wheel drive, I think. Or no, ending up against the wall. Yeah, it kind of sucks, like, you know, when you're just stuck and you can't do anything. It's like the worst feeling ever. Even hear the game at all. I must have turned the volume down way too far. Oops. I really need to get a better audio setup for recording and streaming and whatnot. Because just having audio come through a radio that not headphones is uh, not a prime idea for recording. Especially if you want to like be somewhat professional. So basically, if you want to be professional at this, don't do what I do. Do as I say, not as I do. Basically. I guess at least it isn't echoing. If it's, if it's too quiet for me to hear, it's not echoing through the microphone. I guess that's one upside to it. I really need to like streamline my recording setup. I kind of have already because I got that uh, the HDMI switcher, which is a really nice addition to uh, what I do. But I need to like streamline it more, <laughs> like more with audio and recording and stuff like that. I don't really know how, but I know I can somehow. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I can do that. Car behind is 6.85 seconds, I think. I almost said 5, I think it was 6.8. Which isn't half bad so far. I have to say, though, this car does handle pretty good for what it is. For being an Evo. For being a fucking all-wheel drive car. I'm so surprised every time I see how much one of these cars weigh. Like, they weigh, like, 3,000 pounds. My fucking Chrysler convertible weighs 3,000 pounds. Although my Ford Ranger does also weigh 3,000 pounds. So, yeah. There's a lot of cars that weigh around 3,000 pounds. Like a Mustang, an early 90s Mustang. Fox body weighs around 3,000 pounds. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's weird when an extended cab truck weighs as long or weighs as much as a shortened wheelbase two two door Chrysler convertible. That's when you know your car has a lot of shit in it, and a lot of leather, and a lot of everything else. Like, and it's like a two point five liter four cylinder versus a fucking two point two liter four cylinder. So the engine's smaller ish. It has a turbo on it though. But, uh, I don't know. I wonder how much, like, the earliest Evos weighed, and also the early, uh, STIs. 
Like the 94, 95s. I'm kind of curious of them now. I'm sure it's probably like 2600, 2700. I know the first gen Dodge Neons weighed like 2200, I think. If you got a coupe. This is where you got the AC, ACR? I guess it was the ACR that had, uh, was like, you know, SCCA prepped, so it had like no interior and no options from the factory. I'd love to find one of those someday. There's a lot of cars I'd like to find someday to drive. A lot of stupid cars I'd like to find someday to drive. And buy. Like my current, uh... My current stupid thing that I'm looking for is a fucking... Dodge Stratus RT sedan with a stick shift. Because they exist. And I'm 99% sure it's the only car that ever came with the 2.7 liter awful Chrysler engine and a 5 speed manual instead of the 4 speed automatic that like the Intrepids and shit had. I'm currently trying to find one of those but they're fucking impossible to find. I know they exist though because I've seen them. I've seen them before. But like they're fucking they're impossible to find. They also have a shit engine because the 2.7 is known for just having way too small of oil passageways through the engine and oil gets clogged and oil doesn't get to other parts of the engine so engine locks up and you have a dead 2.7 and like they're not a bad engine other than that they're actually pretty economical they get like like I think my grandma's in traffic gets like or got like 26 miles per gallon or something so they're, they're fairly economical but holy fuck they're just an awful design but I want to find one of those to drive because I'm stupid. Am I hit that wall? And there's just a lot of other cars that are just kind of oddball normal cars. If you can consider that, that I want to buy because a they're generally cheap. I'm like oh, for fuck's sake, like the uh, I'm sure if I did find one of those Stratuses with the five speed, they would probably cost me like twenty five hundred dollars at most. So it's not bad for price and. It's also something I'm stupid enough to enjoy. And if I get an enjoyment out of it for cheap, then hell yeah. Which is why I have a fucking 1989 Chrysler that at most would be worth about $10,000. That I've been just not really pouring money in per se, because I haven't been doing all kinds of crazy shit to it. I've put probably $600 into it total or so. But yeah, it's going to be worth like ten grand at most. <laughs> If I were to like completely restore everything, so yeah. Anyways, there's the uh, finish of that race. Fifty-one thousand credits. Gonna hit level forty-six in the next race. Yeah. Hopefully, if I don't get under fifty thousand credits, I'll get in the next race. But anyways, so point standings and let's continue on. All right, on to our fifth race at Road Atlanta. I almost forgot the name of this track. Also, there's a 99% chance I'm going to be going to Road Atlanta for Formula Drift in May this year. For multiple reasons. A, um, you know, that dude in blue wants to review my Chrysler, and that dude in blue lives in Atlanta, as well as another YouTuber that you may or may not know of, Austin's Garage. He's been, uh, he has a Yugo, and he's his Yugo's been on Doug DeMiro's channel, and will be on Saab Calo4's channel, because... He was just posted a video about getting it ready for going to North Carolina for a YouTuber to film, and I think I know who that is. I mean, as in I know who that is. But, uh, yeah, they, I was like, hey, you guys want to review my car? And surprisingly, that dude in blue was on board. I was honestly surprised with that because that dude in blue doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would really care about filming a review of a 1989 Chrysler. But y you never know. Uh, this is why you, you try things. If you didn't, if I didn't try, and if I didn't ask David, I would have gotten no response. Then I would have not known that he would be on board with reviewing my car. So let that be a lesson to both me and you, because I'm also bad at doing things and initiating things. Try things. Don't just think about it and be like, eh, it won't work out or whatever. Like, just fucking do it. 
Even if it doesn't work out, just do it. There's no reason not to. The worst you can get, like, something like that, like, asking somebody to review your car is a no. And... Even then, nobody's gonna be mean enough, probably, to just say no, and they'll probably be like, Oh, yeah, I'd love to, but, uh, whatever. So, just fucking do it. No holds barred. Right? I think that's, I think that's the, uh... The saying, I think. I'm not good at saying things. So, yeah, but they're both in Atlanta. And then also, Formula Drift, as I mentioned, is in Atlanta. And my boy Arrow, Mr. HD, if you may know. I'm assuming you probably do. Um, he's going to be going down there for that. And I've been trying to meet up with him and also go down to Formula Drift Atlanta for the past three years or so. So, that's going to be happening. Um... Like, there's a 99% chance it's going to happen. Like, even if my car doesn't work, and I can't drive my car down there, I'll drive my fucking truck down there. I don't care. I've been to Atlanta before. I've, well, not really. I've been through Atlanta before. Never been in Atlanta. And plus, like, Road Atlanta is on the outskirts of Atlanta, because, obviously, a race car track, you want it to be away from things, so you don't want it to be, like, all up in people's ears, because they will complain, and you will have a fucking Laguna Seca issue, where people are like, but it's too loud. I'm gonna sue you. It's like, you fucking built your house here after the track was here, you dumbass. Or you bought this place after you knew the track was here. So, anyways, um, that's my little rant about that. I think that's still a thing. I remember that being like three or four years ago that people were complaining about that. It's like, you knew what you were getting into. This track has been here for many, many years. Like, I think Laguna Seca has been there since like the 80s. Maybe not. I don't know. But, yeah, so... It's outside of Atlanta, which is even better, because I really don't like Atlanta, from what I've seen so far, and also from what I've heard of, like, actual Atlanta. Um, I wouldn't want to drive in Atlanta, although you have to to get to the racetrack, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, point is, is that I'm going down there, and I'll have more information on it whenever we get closer to the date, which is May something, like May 15th, I think. And that's pretty much that. And I'd like to take my other car, my car other places, but who knows what that'll happen. Like, Atlanta is my big target, honestly, at the moment. I mean, sure, I can go to, like, you know, Wichita, Kansas, see Hoobie's Garage and all that, uh, which I already plan to do, but, like, that's a lot easier than going down to Atlanta. And the East Coast is another one because regular car reviews, of course, really is interested in filming my car because, of course, Mr. Regular wants to film my car. I'm not surprised at all, really. It's It's, like, right up his alley with... The, the weird Chrysler shit that I like and he likes. So. But there's actually a Chrysler's at Carlisle, which is in Carlisle, Pennsylvania or something. It's like in the middle, middle of Pennsylvania. Usually Mr. Regular, or Mr. Regular has gone to that before. Or regular car views, both of them. Roman and Mr. Regular. And uh, I was like, hey... I could make this, like, a dual trip. I could go to Chrysler's or Carlisle with the car, show the car off, and then also have Mr. Regular review it and possibly maybe even, like, Doug DeMuro because he's in fucking Pittsburgh, so he's close as well, and then there's a few other people that are even close, closer, or as close. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but people, cars, things. So that'll be a thing to happen in the future, maybe. And, uh... Of course, I have to get the car going still, which is a slight pain, because I think I'm going to have to take out the radiator again, because fucking... <sighs> Luckily, this time, like, I'll know I'll just buy a second, or a, uh, I'll buy a new drip pan for the radiator to, uh, like, uh, drain into. There we go. I don't know why I said drain pan, and then couldn't think of where the, the word drain but I can just buy another one and then use the same coolant because I put all new coolant in it. And I don't really want to waste all of that coolant. So, therefore, I will, uh... In my, I may have to change out the thermostat, too, because the temperature gauge just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. And... I don't know if it's actually getting hot or not, though. But, yeah. Um... But I have to get to... The injector... 
for one of the cylinders because I think it isn't firing. And the only way to be able to tell uh, is either A, you know, you can uh, like use a screwdriver to hear the injector, like clicking. But the reason I took the radiator out in the first place was to get to the injectors. You can't get to the injectors on my car unless you take out the radiator. There's just no way around it. And that's why I had the radiator out in the first place. And I will probably have to do it again if I need to actually either A, replace that injector, or B, uh, like ground it or whatever and fix it, or attempt to fix it. Is that a Corvette in front of me? Is that a C6? What are you? Excuse me, sir. Are you a C6 Corvette? I must know. I'm sure I'll be able to get closer to you again sometime in the next lap. Lap and a half. A lap and a quarter, maybe. Um, but yeah, that's basically my plans. Oh yeah, he's a uh, C6 Corvette that got smushied. Rip. And he's gonna fly off the track. Congrats, dumbass. Oh, no, he's not. What? How do you slow down that quickly? You fuck. You cheating fuck face. Oh, my engine. Balls. Balls. Yes, thank you for slowing down. Oh, his front smash, too. He got sandwiched. Ah, uh, man. He, he had a bad day, apparently. Somewhere, uh... Somewhere around the track. So, yeah, that's the, uh... The... News with my Chrysler at the moment. And news with where I plan to go. And I still have to, I mean, it runs, but like I said, it has a bad misfire and it has spark on the cylinder that has a misfire. So I'm assuming either, I'm hoping that the valve isn't, or a valve or valves aren't stuck in the head. That's the thing I'm hoping it's not. Um, I'm hoping it actually is the injector, if it is anything, because that'll be an actual, like, somewhat simple fix instead of, having to take the head off and fix valves for because they stick. I don't want to do that. I probably should take it off anyways and like at least look in there because it's not very hard to take off the head or not the head, the uh, the valve cover. But I don't know where I can get another valve cover gasket, which I can guarantee I would need. Um, which luckily it doesn't leak oil out of there at the moment. That's, that's the big thing I'm happy about is with this car is that so far I haven't had any coolant leaks or oil leaks that I've noticed. But I haven't driven it. I've only had it running for... I've had it, ru I had it run for maybe two, three, or four hours, somewhere around there. But I haven't had it really running, like, on the road at all. Because it won't run long enough to go on the road. Because the, the wires disconnect that I need to fix. Which is an easy thing, and I know exactly what the problem is. Hey, Reusable 46. Ooh. You've established a relationship with North American manufacturer Celine. They have sent you a 2004 S7 supercar. I am excited to drive that at some point. I think I will. I don't know when. But let's continue on the next race, and I'll continue talking about my Chrysler, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I should probably actually show the uh, S7 off. I forgot about that. Here's the S7. has 575 horsepower. Yada, yada, yada. Weighs 2,700 pounds. It's a very long boy, and it's copper. So there's the Slana 7. Let's get you on the next race now. All right, on to our fifth race at where the strike is, Rio de Janeiro, something like that. Rio, the original Rio, not the new silly Rio that Forza Six has in Seven. I'm hoping that I should have a decent advantage on this track, similar to Road Atlanta. It'd be very nice. The game can cut me some slack, maybe. Just never stop pulling down the throttle. That's that's all you gotta do is never stop, never lift. Just just never lift. Except for here because this turn is terrifying for cars that are fast. Yes! I made it without hitting the wall. That's all I wanted to do there. I was also kind of terrified that I was actually going to fly into the wall. I just know something about this car. It has a car or, uh, carbon fiber, not chrome. Carbon fiber trunk lid. Which is something, if I'm right, you can do that in uh, some Need for Speed game, I think. I think Underground 2, maybe? I can't remember, but there's some game 
that I know of that you can actually select if you want the uh, the trunk lid carbon fiber or not, and it actually makes it kind of look like this. I can't remember what game that was, but I think that should be a feature on more games. Like, give us carbon fiber, uh, you know, carbon fiber hoods, carbon fiber fucking trunk lids, and, like, actually have it affect performance, because it does reduce the weight of the car a little bit. I don't know how much, especially on a car like this, which I, where I think the trunk lid would be aluminum, so I don't think it would save that much weight, but maybe, like, four or five pounds or something. It's at least something neat, plus it'd be, like, a little, uh, visual upgrade, too. So it'd be kind of cool. Come on, at, at games, at car games, why you no do this? Sign test drive. Like how it's also a carbon fiber wing attached to the carbon fiber deck lid. Very good. I'm surprised they didn't make the roof black either. Like, it literally would have an unbroken line of black then. Like, paint the roof black or something. Because the hood's black, or the hood's carbon fiber, and so it's black. And the, uh, the trunk lid's the same, so why not fucking make the roof black? Hello, Forza, what are do? Although this is probably a, like a real car that exists somewhere, and this is the way it is, so therefore they didn't change it. And all my bitching is, well, no matter what, all my bitching is silly, because it's, it's a game that's 14, no, 13 years old now. Almost 13 years old, and four months will be 13 years old. 13 years old, he'll be a teenager. <laughs> So, I don't know why I'm complaining. Also, why am I taking these corners, like, just awfully? Hello, brain. Would you like to not do that? I'm still taking the corners awfully, by the way. Also, this car has arrow mirrors, or rally mirrors, because... They, they're really close to the body, and they won't get knocked off if you hit a limb. I'm 90% sure that's what those mirrors are for. Like, these kind of mirrors. Why those on, and why they're on rally cars. And plus, you're gonna, like, if it's a rally cross car, you're gonna bump into other cars, probably, so... Why have the mirrors taken off? Although, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess, like, side view mirrors would be good for... Like, seeing if you had smoke behind your car. But really, I don't... I can't think of a reason, like, in normal rally stages, of why... I guess I guess they do have multiple cars running a course at the same time in real life, usually. Kind of like Dirt 3, or Dirt 2, one of the two. Um, so maybe that's why. Maybe they just have multiple cars running at different spots, so... Basically, if you're going slow, then somebody's going to catch up to you, and you can see them with your side view mirrors. I don't actually know what the, uh, what the point of side view mirrors other than that would be. Like, just do a fucking rear view, like a, a middle... Uh, Center of the dash rear view, and voila. Although that would have, that would, well, unless you attach it to something, like, really sturdy, and also made the mirror itself really sturdy, that would have a, uh, a hazard of, you know, if you got into a crash, it would smack your ass in the face. Um, I don't know. I've never really thought, I think rally cars have an inside rear view mirror, from what I've seen. I don't know, man. I don't know much about rally cars, like, actual real rally cars. All I know is the little bit that I know from video games. I'd love to make a rally car out of something someday. And, like, take it on a rally. But all of the cars that I could imagine, like, actually legitimately making a good rally car, I wouldn't want to tear up, so... Ugh. Like, Subaru... Oh, fuck. Ow. Like, older Subarus, 90 Subarus. Like, Lancers, earlier Evos, or Evos like this even. I couldn't see myself trashing one at all. I wouldn't even want to take them down their stock, honestly. I'd do something stupid, like, <laughs> I'd fucking, I'd, I'd put rally tires in my Ranger. Make my Ranger into a rally car, that'd be fantastic. It'd be kind of a long wheelbase car, which would be uh, probably not very useful. Considering most rally cars are generally... Fairly short wheelbase. I found a single cab ranger. Two with a single cab. It's 
sure as I managed to damage my car that lap and also almost got a best lap. Interesting. Uh, okay. I don't think I need to hit my brake there at all. I have done it flat out before, but it always terrifies me for whatever reason. I like how we had less laps in this track than on Mount Panorama, or Blue Mountains, whatever the hell it is. But the lap times are like 15 seconds shorter on this track. Like, what? Even? What? Bosch spark plugs. I think I bought Bosch spark plugs for my... Oops, that's an engine. I think I bought Bosch spark plugs for my Chrysler. No, I bought NGK. That was what they were. Not Bosch. I think they were NGK at least. They were copper, I know that. They were kind of expensive too. And I bought good sparkle wires and they didn't work, so I'm stuck with shitty sparkle wires that I can't use. Because my car requires a very special set of sparkle wires and it sucks. Although if I do take off the uh, the radiator again, I guess I could work on that and actually making a set of sparkle wires. Because you can do that and yeah, hey, under eight minute total time, that's pretty cool. Ah, I got a Snapchat. 52,000 credits. Now we're going to be near full 47. Oh, wait. Oh, there were seven races in this series. Okay. That makes more sense. I was like, wait, what? I have 60 points, but it says next race. All right, on to the final fucking race at this fucking track. I'm not excited for this. Although it's the same every time I race on this stupid track. I'm never excited for it. And I'll never see myself getting excited for it ever in the future, so... There's that. Oh my god. All-wheel drive means understeer like crazy. Did you know that all-wheel drive creates understeer? Would have never guessed. It's such a foreign concept. Balls, this thing is not. No. This car sucks at going around sharp corners at low speeds. Oh, that's a rebel motor. Well, if I don't hit the rebel motor again, I should be fine. But I really don't see that happening at all. For whatever reason, I never changed my volume, so I can't really hear where the car's at RPM wise. So that's even better. This fucking burnout I was just doing there. Like, what was that even? The car wasn't really going anywhere, and it was wasn't. It didn't seem like the wheels were spinning that fast. Yet it was like making lots of smoke and like acting like it was doing a burnout. I don't get it. Like, there it was again. I don't know. That's kind of weird. I feel like 500 horsepower should at least make this car like somewhat, you know apt to do a burnout, especially if you're, like, sliding anyways. It's, it's just an Evo. It's not like it's, you know, a Lamborghini or anything. And I've seen Lamborghinis do donuts and burnouts and shit, so... Yeah. Don't hit the rev limiter. I'm just gonna drift around all of these corners in this track. I just hit the Y button while hitting the X or fucking B button. So three laps still. I haven't changed the lap amount on this track yet, at all. How am I recording for like an hour and hour and ten minutes? I think. 
It's about to be a lot more. At least, you know, 10 minutes more. I don't know, actually. Before these, these laps were taking about 4 minutes, 4 minutes and 15 seconds with a B-class car. So I'm assuming with this car, it might bring him down like 4 minutes at least. If not a little bit less, hopefully. Well, this car is pretty awful at taking turns on this track. So it may be roughly the same. Oh, the last time I was on this track, I was driving a Stealth. So, or no, I was driving an NSX last time, wasn't I? Or was I? Did I? I can't I guess I drove the NSX around this track. I honestly can't remember. Nope, no rev limiter. No bangy bangy. Please, car. Just me. You wonder why I'm using the fucking e-brake, and the reason why is obvious. This fucking car just it sucks at trying to go around turns slowly that are sharp. So when we do it like this, oh god. Except for when I do that and I fuck everything up. Hey, it's over one again. That means I'm going to probably have damage, no matter what. Good news is I'm far ahead of the AI, so I can just kind of cruise, I guess. I guess. Yeah, we're still getting over four minute lap times, but let's see, yep, we, uh, we got about six seconds ahead of B class, which isn't too awful, to be honest. Just does not like this track, though. You'd think with front wheels powering stuff in this on all-wheel drive cars, you would think that the wheels would be more likely to go, or, or the, the the fucking the front of the car would be more likely to go wherever you're turning. But it doesn't. I guess because the front, the rear wheels are pushing straight forward at all times, except for, well, in this at least in games they are because I'm 90% sure that the all-wheel steering systems of real Japanese cars don't get translated well into games. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a game actually correctly have four-wheel steering. But, uh... Well, at least that kind of four-wheel steering. Like, you know, the the ice racing cars on uh, Super Challenge 2 sure shit did, but those because they were specially made rallycross cars or ice racing cars. But, yeah, I don't think... I don't think it's ever gotten... I think that's how these cars are actually, like, decent in real life is that they have that extra little bit of help with the all-wheel steering. So you, there's not as much stress on uh, the front wheels trying to turn. Because the rear wheels are kind of turning in the opposite direction, so it's kind of like trying to spin the back end of the car around, kind of. I think... I don't know if I'm actually thinking about this in the right way. I don't, I've, I've never really taken like a physics class or anything. So I could be completely talking in my, out of my ass here. But this is at least what it seems like. From what I can gather, uh, this is what it seems. Because I've driven cars with four-wheel steering before. I'm pretty sure the NSX I drove had a, that I talked about in the last episode had four-wheel steering. And then I drove the 3000 GT recently that had four-wheel steering, a VR4 3000 GT. Uh, 300 DXs, or a 300 DX, at least the 91 had four-wheel steering, I'm pretty sure. Balls. Oh, I didn't damage the car, cool. I think I'll, I, Z32s had, uh, god damn it, had four-wheel steering, I think. I can't remember. I don't think the Z31 did, but it might. Because it was the very, very top of the line 84 Z31. So it may, it may as well have had, uh, four-wheel steering of some sort. You know, it had speakers in the seats, which were really fucking cool. That was one of my favorite parts about that car. Or is one of my favorite parts about that car, because we still have it in my work. It's not like it's gone or anything. Speaking of the Z31, more games need to have Z31s. And 280ZX turbos. And 280Zs. And then, like, all of the Z cars that they're missing. Because they have all the, you know... They have the 350Zs and the 370Zs. And usually, if they have a classic 
Datsun, they have the 240Z. But like, the 280Z is good. The 280ZX Turbo is really good. The 300ZX Z31 Turbo is really good. Like, please, just start including those in games. I know like Gran Turismo 4 had them, so thus Gran Turismo 5 and 6 had them, but or at least some of them. I don't think I know of a single game that has 280Z. Or no, 280ZX Turbo. Just like a stock 280ZX Turbo, because I know Forza has like the race car version. But like, it's not the real car. You ain't tricking me with that shit, Forza. So, make Z31's great again, basically. Also, R31 Skylines are very uh, hard to come by in games. R31s and R30s. They're still Skylines. They're still turbocharged. and I think the R32 was the first Skyline to have all-wheel drive. From right, the first GTR. I think the R31 only had is the R31 GTSR. And it was rear-wheel drive, if I remember right. I know it's a Forza 7, but I don't have it unlocked. Because they put it behind a wall of... You have to get lucky. And see, I like... I mean, it's okay that like they're like, Oh yeah, you gotta unlock these cars now. It's like, okay, I'll, I'll happily unlock cars. But it's like... I'd rather have... Be able to play through the game... Without having to open fucking boxes... To... Unlock all the cars. Like, by if I were to 100% complete the game... I should have all the cars. Or if you need, like, you know, get this many credits or uh, hit this level, like, this stupidly high level, like, 250 or something. Um, then I could see that, but, like, in Forza 7, it's like, oh, it's it's the luck of the draw. You never know what you're going to get. And you may get a car that you already have. Or, uh, it's, like, it's kind of a silly system. I'm, I'm not really a fan of loot boxes of sorts. Like, I'd rather have everything in-game either purchasable, like, which Overwatch does pretty well, kind of, except for stuff that's locked behind, uh, certain events, but that's even not really that bad, because they always have the events, you can buy them to the events, whatever, but, really, at least for racing games, you should be, like, be able to buy every car, or be able to unlock every car, just by normally playing through the game, not doing anything... Not grinding fucking opening boxes to fucking get a car. That's just a silly concept to me. Like, I was happy when, you know, games like this were out. And, like, unlike Forza 4, in this game, you have to unlock all the cars. You can't just buy every car from the very beginning of the game. But, also, again, it's like, like, this better than Forza 7, because I don't have to fucking get lucky to get all the cars. I just play through the game. And I have all the cars. Son of a bitch. Hey, look, the brake lights were, or the backup lights were red. It's good to know. I was wondering about that in like the first or second race. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of silly things in games nowadays I don't like. Lots of uh, questionable decisions made by CEOs of gaming, like, game producers. How come I couldn't see the AI cars up there? Like, they're supposed to be going over that bridge. This is, I was going under. I didn't see a single one. And I can't hear, so I don't know if I could hear them or not. Huh. Yeah. I had lots of rants in this episode. I apologize. But damn it, somebody needs to say them. Say, say what I'm saying. See what I'm saying. No, stay on the track. Close enough. I didn't get a penalty, so therefore I stayed on track. Oh, look at that perfect all-wheel drift. Did you know that all-wheel drive drifting is harder than regular drifting with wheel drive cars? You're going to make Mr. HD unhappy. Just say that. I wouldn't recommend it, though, because... Why would you make somebody angry? The memes are fun. Ah, I'm glad this fucking race is over. Please don't let this track be in the next one, because I've done this track for the last three fucking events. 
Give me a break, please. But anyways, there is our fucking entire race series finished. Level 46. Got 70 points, because seven races. And we win our Pano, or not Panos, uh, Pagani. Yeah, Pagani. Pagani, Pagani. Number 17, IMSA, Zonda GR, 600 horsepower. All the stats. I didn't mean to do that quite yet. I think I just saw 1998 miles, which is pretty cool. Next episode, I'll be at 2000. But anyways, there we go. So thank you all so much for watching. I will keep it on this screen for now. We are 68.9% done with the game. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'm out of here. See ya.